Good morning, my children. Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Connected Kids Children's Church. We are so excited to have you with us. This is the Children's Church Ministry of Connected Church. I'm the founder, Charles Botts, and I am here with my lovely children. Say good morning, Ariella. Say good morning, Daniel. And we are thrilled for another Sunday morning Children's Church to come together with you. Daniel or Ella, who is praying this morning? Ariella is going to pray. Wonderful. She did not. Thank you so much, Ariella, for volunteering. Let's bow our heads and Ariella, please pray nice and loud so we can hear you. Amen. Thank you, Ariella. Wonderful, wonderful. And today, today, we are going to be continuing. We have been doing a series of lessons on Jesus coming back. And I think it's so important in this Christmas season, as we're preparing for Christmas, and as we're thinking about, and first of all, Daniel, what do we celebrate at Christmas? Yeah, exactly right. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus. And so why, Ariella, was Jesus born? Why did Jesus have to come to earth? Right. How did he save us? Yeah, yeah. Jesus was born. Agreed. And so Jesus was born. One second, Daniel. Jesus was born so that he could actually sacrifice his life for us on the cross. Now, when Jesus went up to heaven, did he promise something? Did he say he was going to heaven and he was never coming back? He was never going to see us again? Daniel, what did Jesus promise when he went back up to heaven after raising from the grave? Well, we wouldn't have had to die on a cross, but we wouldn't have been able to spend forever in his new kingdom, his new heaven and new earth. And so, yes, Ariella, you're right. Jesus said that he would come back for us. So we have been talking the last several weeks. That's okay. We're going to keep moving forward. We have been talking the last several weeks about Jesus coming back. And so we looked at a couple of stories that illustrated Jesus coming back. What was one of the stories that we looked at a couple weeks ago that taught us about Jesus coming back? Daniel, what was one of the stories? So they could be ready. Uh, close. So they could be ready to go into the marriage feast. No, it's not. Uh, but I appreciate you trying to make that comparison. Ariella, what, what other story? Okay. 
And what's the lesson? What did we learn from that um, story? Well, right. More specifically, if God has given us a gift, if God has given us something like his Holy Spirit, should we just hold on to it and not use it and not help anybody and just, yeah. We should use it for other people's good. We should use it so that other people can get to know Jesus and other people can have Jesus' spirit. That's how we double the talent. That's how we double the gifts. That's how the, the man that had five was able to get 10 and the man that had two was able to get four was they shared, they invested, they poured what God had given them, what the manager had given them into other things. And that's how they were able to generate more. Yes, Ariella. And then we're going to move on for today's lesson. Um, indirectly, yes, yes. So there are some things that you're going to do in life um, to help you live. I mean, part of the reason why mommy and daddy work is so that we can we can support ourselves, we can support our family. Um, but when we earn our money, we don't just use it for ourselves. When we go to work, when we earn our money, um, when we take the, the, what we've been given, we also use it to be a blessing to other people. We, are, uh, we donate food, we donate clothes, we give money to other organizations that help people. So that's how one of the ways that we take what we have been given and we use it to um, grow God's kingdom. We use it to tell other people about Jesus. Yes, Daniel, and then we're going to move on. Yep, he, he, he missed an opportunity, right. Yep, well, that was a big mistake. Uh, so today's lesson is going to come from, uh, I'm going to try to share my screen here. Uh, hopefully, um, we're able to come back. Today's lesson comes from uh, the book of Mark, uh, chapter 13, verse 24 uh, through 37. A little bit of reading, um, but it is uh, helpful, and we will um, uh, uh, come back and discuss pretty quickly. At that time, after the anguish, after the hard times, the sadness of those days, the sun will be dark, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man, that's Jesus, coming on the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones, that's you and I, everyone that believes, from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud, that means when the leaves start to come and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. So you can tell what's happening. How do we know when the seasons are changing, guys? How do we know when it's no longer winter time when spring starts to come how do we know daniel yep perfect it starts to get warmer and what else ariella what else happens in springtime perfect it rains a little bit more and flowers start to bud. That, that is excellent. So we can look at nature for signs that tell us what the season is. So that's the lesson that Jesus is telling us to learn from the fig tree. Now we're going to keep reading verse 29. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, when you see these things that he just described happening in the world, you can know that his return is very near right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Another way to say it is heaven and earth will pass away, 
God's word remains. However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or God, uh, God's son, the son of man, Jesus himself. Only the father knows. And since you know not when that time will come, be on guard, stay alert like the wise virgins, make sure you have enough oil, make sure you're paying attention. The Son of Man can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave, remember this? He gave each of his servants instructions about the work they were to do. He told the gatekeeper, watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return in the evening at midnight before dawn or at daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone, watch for him. So what Jesus is saying here is there's another illustration of what it's like when he returns. And the illustration is imagine that there is another manager, another landowner who has some property and he tells his servants, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take care of the sheep. I want you to uh, clean out the barn. I want you to wash the floors. He gives everyone a job and he says, all right, I want this done by the time I get back. But he doesn't tell them when he's coming back. So one mistake they might make is to say, well, he's not coming back for a couple of days. I have plenty of time to do my work. But what happens when he comes back and the work's not done? It's trouble for the workers. Yep, big time trouble for the servants. So that's why we have to be always ready for Jesus's return because even though heaven and earth will pass away, God's word will always remain. So that is where we're going to go into our craft. Yes. Without your work being done. Right. So then make sure you do your work while you can work. Because it's hard to work at night and you do need sleep. Sleep is very important. So what the Bible is telling us is that when we can do our work during the day, during other times when we're alert, when we have energy, we should do our work. We should not waste the day playing and being silly and goofing around and not doing our work because if we go to bed without our work being done and the master comes back, we won't be ready. Yes, Daniel. Right, but he he didn't tell them because he wants them to do the work um, without delay. He doesn't want them waiting until he is coming back because then they would just prolong it. They would wait. They would, there's a word, it's kind of a big word, but you guys have heard me use it before. It means when you wait for the last minute, it begins with a P. What's the word? Procrastinate. Very good, Ariella. That's what the master doesn't want, Daniel. He doesn't want us to procrastinate. He doesn't want us to wait until right before he comes back to get things done. He wants us to work now while we have the chance. All right. So with that, we're going to transition into our craft for today. Uh, we started working on it a little bit. Ariella um, started to work on hers. And Daniel is going to set his up now, but let me share the screen so that y'all can see what we're doing. Um, we're doing the illustration of um, the heaven and earth passing away, but God's word remaining uh, we are using for our illustration um, uh, this starcraft uh, and so as you can see you're going to need uh, crayons or markers uh, some string uh, scissors hole punch if you have or you can use the scissors to cut a hole um, uh, and you're going to make a star you're going to decorate it and um, in the star will have the words heaven and earth 
will pass away, but God's word remains. This could be, you could treat this as a Christmas ornament, um, be a nice Christmas ornament to hang from the tree. Um, uh, and it could also be a necklace for um, your young people. Uh, so um, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started on the craft, and then we'll come back together. Right All right, so as we can see, Daniel and Ella are finishing up. They're uh, wrapping up their stars, so they're nearly done. And uh, we are going to wrap up uh, Connected Kids this morning. So um, in today's story, we learned that um, uh, Jesus told us that we can look at nature. We can look at what's happening in the world around us as, uh, as illustrations, as indications um, signs as to what season it is. We know that it's winter because the temperature gets colder, because um, plants uh, begin to die out. We know that it's spring because the temperature gets warmer and because plants um, begin to uh, bud and grow their leaves. And so um, as we look forward to um, transitions, uh, I think it's important for us to also look to the world um, for indications and signs of Jesus's return. And what's so important is that we do the work that we've been called to do while we can, because the time will come where we won't be able to work. We want to be like the wise virgins. We want to be like the uh, diligent workers. We want to be like the responsible employees that take what God has given us and produce a return so that when Jesus comes back for his church, um, uh, we will have added to it. Um, Ariella or Daniel, do you have any final questions or thoughts for today? Yes, Daniel. Okay, Ariella, do you have any final thoughts or questions for today? All right. Well, we appreciate you once again, uh, family. We appreciate you hanging out with us. We appreciate you stopping by, spending some time with Connected Kids here at uh, My Connected Church. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, stay in this fight. All right. God bless everyone. Take care. Have a great day.